Yeah. Um, hello, everyone, and welcome to our presentation. We're really happy to see you here, and today we are going to share with you how we at Macy Labs make our customers and editors fall in love with Drupal. And when I say we, I mean, first of all, Claudine, our developer and site builder at Macy Labs. And my colleague, Anna. Anna works as a user experience specialist and also as a project manager. Yeah, that's true. And what we're going to talk today about is, first of all, why we're here or what is the problem, and then um, how we approach this problem and try to solve this. And more concrete, what kind of tricks, techniques, and even modules we use to ensure that we can achieve our goals. And of course, as I mentioned, modules, we will name that, them and we will give you the possibility to have a summary page with all links about all modules. So you don't need to Google or try to find out what we are talking about. We provide this information for you at the end of the presentation. So, why we're here? We're here because we saw our customers quite a lot of times very unhappy with their uh, content management system experience. We saw them really confused and also overwhelmed by triple complex features and terminology, trying to explain what we are talking about, what they're talking about, and also a couple of times I needed to even apologize for Drupal, explaining like, yeah, I understand it's not that intuitive, but yeah, you just need to learn or accept that this system works in this way. And I also needed to answer the questions like, yeah, I know it's really easy in WordPress, but this is not WordPress, it's a little bit more complex. So yeah, I'm sorry, we need to change this in a different way. But we also saw, we saw our clients breaking their websites. And this is never fun. It's never fun for us, it's never fun for them. It's a loss on efficiency and even sometimes on happy, happy client relationship. So yeah. There is a problem, we know what the problem is. Why this is a challenge? The challenge is that our clients have very different needs. They're all really different, they all work on different projects. And because of this, the solutions that we provide also differ in their complexity. But our clients have also really different technical experience. Some of them can program and really work well with different complex systems and other need to learn what is footer, what is main navigation, how they're supposed to work together, and this never helps to provide easy, unique solution that you can apply for each project or for each client. So what do we do to tackle this? Of course, um, in the very beginning, after we accept the project, sign all papers, we know roughly what we are going to talk about. We know, okay, this is a website about that topic, and probably there is so many content types or roughly have a scope, so we start with creating the basic setup and create a basic page because somehow at Amazing Labs we always have a basic page and we also need a basic page, including the um, editor, rich editor for the clients. And as soon as this happens, before theming, we ask them to come by and we start starting to learn together with them how they can use our system. So we train them early and iterative. Why this is important? Because we can introduce Drupal gradually. It's like you don't have to learn everything right now, all 10 content types, all this complexity. Well, this is a basic page. This is basic page has an editor. You can use this editor in this way. And we also ask them to work with their own content and create their own content. Drupal and its basic terminology, and I really emphasize basic terminology, are introduced as soon as possible because this facilitates our communication with them. We usually introduce the uh, terminology like content type or a note, note ID, taxonomy, and show where they can find all this information or all these parts of Drupal. It helps us also if they have a trouble and they call us, I have a problem on the page about kittens. Nice. I don't, I don't know what, it, what exactly you're talking about. Can you please tell me uh, what is the note ID of this page? And afterwards, I can easily find this help fix or um, explain that probably this is a bug on issue we can actually fix easily. So it helps a lot. But no displays for use and things like this. Also, 
As I mentioned, I asked or we ask our clients always create their own content or try to give us the most closest version of the last their content. Because in this way, first of all, they feel like they are also introduced and they also interact. But we also can see, OK, the title is probably too long. Or this text doesn't work for a, for a teaser. And maybe the buttons should be renamed. And we, if we have these problems in really, really early stages, we can easily fix them gradually also, not in the last couple of hours before the release. And they also understand, especially in our case, we produce the multilingual websites, that it's really difficult to create the whole content in, in a week before they go live in several languages, and especially in several languages. We also use so-called internally standard presentation as a basis for content training. This is highly customized for each client, but each presentation has a description of the content type, list of the content types, and also contains the information about how you can find a node, how you can find the content, taxonomy terms, all these basics that we use in all projects. But we create several versions. The first version with the basic things, and then over the course of the project, when they add other content types, we also add this information, especially if there is some complexity. For example, if you have a really sophisticated product page. But one of the all, always important, but it's also important for us, to sit with clients together and let them play. We observe them, how they interact with Drupal. And this helps us to understand what can be the problem, particularly in this project. Maybe particularly this customer has a trouble understanding connections and relations. Maybe our descriptions are not the best ones. And observing this uh, several times over the course of the project helps us also to fix it early on and fix it quickly. So this is a really good way to learn the person and learn the organization you are working with. Because each organization has culture, has special maybe terminology, and this helps to understand this. And we also have documentation, which is stored outside the Drupal. And it doesn't mean that we write novels or poems or we work as waterfall, no. We add the essential parts or most sophisticated parts of the system in our confluence to help our team members also get into this project if needed, but our clients can also employ different people, new people, and this helps them to get faster into the project and work better and efficiently with Drupal. What we also do, of course, we use uh, different kind of setups for all our Drupal 7 projects, and um, we're going to talk about this later a little bit. Also, we elaborate highly customized solutions for our clients. Some of them are really useful and reusable for many, many different projects. Some of them not really, but yeah, it's good to have them. And we also work and started to work with Drupal 8 projects, and we use the power of Drupal 8 because, as we all know, Drupal 8 improved a lot in many ways. But there is still be potential for improvement, but we're trying to make best of this as well. And when I say uh, basic setup, um, I mean two things. And the first thing is concept and considerations. What are you going to produce? What is going to be? Um, for example, when you learn about the project, you know probably you're going to have a certain amount of pages. and the client want to have different kind of news or different kind of documents. And um, I saw in a couple of projects that people tend to produce a content type for each specific page or specific kind of pages. And sometimes you have like five different documentation pages or document pages or news pages. And this is OK. This is fine. But it makes people work faster and understand the concept better if you have only one content types about the same content, but with difference in this categorization, categorization and then allow people just choose what you want to create. In this example, you can see we have a group of, um, the group of document group. And you can create reports. You can report presentation, white papers, and it's really straightforward for clients. But also it's important to call the uh, content types wisely or call them somehow that is easier to understand what it's all about. Because if you see the content type fancy bottom blocks, 
well, you can find out what it's about, but it's not that easy. Also important is to name not only content types, but fields in a way that people can understand. We all use our professional language. We have a common understanding within the company, within the community, and sometimes it's not the same what client would like to use. And sometimes they don't understand what do you mean body or description or lead. Sometimes, or quite often actually, it's better to use their terminology or find out about their terminology, what it's supposed to be for them. In this example, you can see that there is a really good mapping between the template and between the, uh, the outcome. You know where you're going to place the information on um, areas of expertise of a particular person, and you know where you can input this information to present it on the website. It's also important to describe the fields, but not like this is the field to write some text about something. Uh, it's important to, uh, to give the um, information about the outcome. And this example, I'm not sure if you can read this, I hope so, but by applying this checkbox, you make the certain presenta uh, publications visible in um, uh, results of a filtering. So you know, pretty straightforward, okay, I can, at the title of the presentation, make this presentation or publication visible in a certain area of the website and there is no room of imagination or interpretation. Uh, what is also important is to provide information on pictures. This is actually one of the really, really often asked questions from the clients. Okay, give me please the perfect resolution of this picture because I'm trying to have this client meeting on our news page and I have all our stakeholders without the heads. And yeah, you can laugh at it, but it's not that not easy. And if you have this information somewhere or the best where you are going to upload this picture, please do so because it's really, really big pain, big pain point for the clients. Also, it's important to know for people where this field is supposed to be uh, displayed. For us, it can be really straightforward that you can have a full note where you display part of the information and you can have uh, the overview page where you show the lead text of the teaser. Not all people are so, so uh, savvy or Drupal savvy. So if you say, okay, this field you can use to write the data or date in here, but you have also another field that you should fill in or choose or apply the options. And this field is going to be used only for filtering. And this helps people to understand, okay, I will write this down here, it will be shown in there, and this is a second option that is for the filtering. No questions, understandable, and for new people it's also really easy to work with this content. Another thing is, uh, what I mentioned before, ruin or breaking the websites. So, um, in this example, you can see that different users, they have different possibilities to work on the same content. This is absolutely the same content, the same notes, and as user one, I like it a lot because I can do everything. I can do everything what is allowed. I can delete, I can translate, I can edit, and this is great. But country managers of this particular website do not supposed to edit certain content, access a certain content, and do the only operations that are allowed. You can keep the links inside, and it was implemented in the first place. You also had the link like in a first screenshot, and if you click on this link, you land on a page where you see the information like, sorry, you have not enough permissions to work on this page, and this is not a good customer experience or editor experience, because if you don't need to do some action, why you have the choice to actually try to do this action? And depending on the client level, you can limit, you can allow more. And also, VisiWeek is a good example. Here you see two versions with a lot of icons and with less amount of icons. You not always need to use a whole bunch. And if you, especially new with the system, you need to think, okay, I need to find the way to upload a picture. And you have to look at these three rows and trying to find the right icon. This is not too bad, but it's better if you have only limited amount, everything is stand out and you see, okay, one, two, three, four, option four, probably this is one for the picture. And this is good. 
But, of course, to do all of this and create all these possibilities, we need to use either core power or modules. And now we're going to share with you the information on module that we use in our configurations, and this is going to be presented by Claudine. To speed up the process of setting up a new website, we have a Drupal installation internally that is pre-configured with a lot of settings and modules. So we can just copy it and start and don't have to go through all of the boring stuff that site builds have to do when they start the project. This also helps us streamline the processes that we use over our three locations and get um, new employees started on the best practices that we use when we work. A lot of these modules are only used to enhance the site build, um, the customer experience by um, making the administration interface or the content edition better. So as you can see on the slide, this is the normal Drupal 7 um, content list with these three pretty useless filters that we don't ever use. Um, but by adding a few uh, simple modules, we can turn this into something that is way easier to uh, work with. So here you can see we have added administration views that turns your content list into a view where we can expose filters based on the projects, the clients need or whatever they want to be able to filter their content with. And also it provides the free text search on titles, which is probably the most used features um, ever. Um, then we always use uh, modules like administration menu to uh, help our clients find the options that they have easier when they work with Drupal. Um, logging destinations so they don't end up on this very useless user page when logging in. Um, and also we replace the seven theme with either shiny or ad minimal. Um, the one on the slide is ad minimal. Uh, personally, it's my favorite. It looks very nice with the colors, the flat design. It's very modern. I think it's, yeah, awesome theme. Um, then the other thing that we always need to make better because um, for people to work with Drupal is the uh, content creation. One of the most essential part is uh, file management. So for this, we use file entity and media uh, to allow our con uh, clients uh, to deal with files, find them on the system, um, add titles once and reuse everything instead of having to upload every single file every time like Drupal does from scratch. Um, the other very es essential aspect that Drupal 7 doesn't come with is a CK of a Wisebeak editor. And for this, uh, we use the CK editor. We use this over the Wisebeak module because we like the way it integrates with other modules and we like the editor. It's, um, I think it's one of the best on the market currently. Um, then to help people deal with internal path, uh, we use Linkit. So Linkit is the, um, the image that you can see on the slide. It provides this uh, model box where you can search for files, taxonomies, and nodes um, that are on the system and, it, and find your content easily and add them without creating broken links that you will need to go and edit once you migrate your website. Um, and the last one chosen just makes your select options um, easy to work with. So what is the status of this in Drupal 8? Um, at Amazing Labs, we started working with Drupal 8 um, about two years ago. We relaunched the uh, Amazing Labs website one and a half year ago. Um, and we started working on client project beginning of this year. So we use it in production, especially when we can guarantee that we don't need too many contrib modules uh, or big additions. Uh, for site builder, Drupal 8 is amazing. I love working with it. It 
there's so many aspects of it that make more sense or that just got better. Um, and yeah, some of the things are better. Um, we have using core, so as was said in the um, keynote, go thank trees. <laughs> Um, we also have, finally, a uh, YGBG editor in core. So I think Drupal is now an adult and ships like a CMS that like the people expect from a CMS. One of the aspects that I'm really excited about, about in Drupal 8 is uh, inline editing. So for these who haven't tested this yet, um, you can look at your nodes in the front end and edit your uh, text areas and your title directly in the interface. Um, this is awesome for clients because it removes this step between the administration interface and the way their website looks. Their changes, their text or the images they change are directly visible and I think this is this is an awesome feature and also uh, removes the need for this very, very broken preview setting uh, or function that Drupal has. Um, but yeah, sadly with a new systems, sometimes we also create new problems. So one of the, the aspects that I have a very hard, um, a lot of trouble working with is the content list when we work with multilingual website. And at Amazing Labs, being Swiss, we almost always work with multilingual websites. Um, one of the, um, the problem we have is that the, the content will list all of your nodes in all of the languages, which is great to give you an overview of what is already there. But like in my example, if you want to Say your interface is in English and you want to edit this node that is French. You click edit, it will open the English node and not the French node as was, would be the expected behavior. Um, this happens because the edit always opens the node in the language of the interface. You cannot expect your client to deal with this because they won't know that change happens. There is no really prominent visual cue um, and the, the risk of overriding translations is really big. So there is an issue, people are fixing this, um, but in the current production websites, we, yeah, it's broken. Also, obviously a lot of country modules aren't there or some features weren't added to core um, for the the replacement for the administration menu, there is this small module admin toolbar that can, again provides us with the drop down navigation for the backend. Then another aspect that is really basic is the link interface in the CK uh, editor that is um, shipping with core. The, um, the model box doesn't really allow you to search for in, um, internal nodes and doesn't do any kind of validation on the links that you add. And it's very easy to add uh, broken links um, uh, without the HTTP in front and get wrong. Uh, yeah. the, um, the Linkit module is not, or I think we will need this as well, again, but it's not started porting yet. They're still talking about a lot of um, conceptual things, but it will happen. Um, then the <coughs> uh, media management. Uh, media management is a is a hard topic. Uh, right now, working with media on Drupal 8 feels like going back four years to when Drupal 7 was at the beginning. So basically, you have to upload all your files every single time. <laughs> the, um, Media management initiatives are working very hard on providing us with a, an amazing experience, um, but the, the project that they're trying to build is huge and they need help. So if you, if you have developers or if you are developers, um, this is something that I think is going to uh, improve Drupal a lot when this module can finally be used in production. 
And as a quick um, side note, the um, sprints on Friday. So on, um, so on Friday we have the the sprint, and also we should. Um, the, um, right, so, uh, sorry. Um, sprints are not only for developers. One of the things that I want to um, really say here is that we site builders, we have a lot of um, power as well and we should get involved in this process because in the end, the Drupal 8, the, the way it was built, it's built for us and for our clients. We are the ones that are going to use the interface and um, configure it in our jobs. And so I think it's very important that we also get involved into the development process and um, look at the proposition for uh, interfaces, uh, give our feedback and test it. So join the sprints. There's always going to be people helping uh, if you want to get started, um, yeah. Okay, um, next we'll see a few examples of what you can do to get your clients even happier. <laughs> um, so one thing that we always, almost always use um, at Amazy Labs is the CK Editor content templates. The, this is a um, CK Editor plugin and not a Drupal module, but it allows you to configure uh, templates that can be added to your CK Editor. Um, they show up like a, a box or kind of look like the table stuff. Um, and you can add all of the content in them, like titles, images. But when you, when you save it, it will wrap your content with um, custom markup and classes that you can configure and allows you to do things like this orange box that has a rounded border, a corners, things, and make your normal basic pages look fancier. Um, these templates are really easy to set up. So we basically just add the uh, JavaScript file in your theme and you configure these templates by defining what markup will be displayed. Another aspect that we have to deal with sometimes is nodes with a lot of fields. Um, maybe you have a, part, um, a product that has 50 different attributes that need to be defined. And for your clients to edit these nodes is a huge pain. The, it's hard to find uh, what is available, the options that you have, and also where these fields are. So with a really simple module like Field Group, you can make this uh, easier by just putting stuff into categories. And here, again, like Anna said, this is one of the aspects where it's good to go and ask your client how they see this, because um, they, they will need to use these categories and they have, they have opinions and experience on what they think in their product belongs together. Another aspect that we sometimes need to reduce in complexity is when we deal with huge taxonomies. We have, when we have 70 terms with different levels, um, it is easier to get lost and not find the term that you want to uh, tag your content with. But with simple modules like client-side hierarchical select or the other one hierarchical select, you can turn your taxonomies into different um, select boxes that will filter and reduce the options that you have at every level. As you can see on the, the slide, um, the, the bottom taxonomy also has a description. So we, this is a special thing that we did just for this project. We added um, the description of the term when one is selected so that the client can again be very sure that this was the term that he wanted to select. And sometimes when 
Sometimes basic pages with their normal YZW editor aren't enough to really create the experience that you want um, for your website. Uh, this is one of my favorite uh, content editor um, module, paragraphs. So what you can do with paragraphs is you can define these paragraph types um, where you basically define them the way you define small content types by adding fields, um, giving them settings on how to display them and templates. And in your node, um, you or your client can then uh, select different paragraph types and add the content. Um, these paragraphs can then be um, moved or added in as many as we want. Um, as you can see, we have this beautiful Star Wars page that has a slider on top uh, or an accordion on top, then this um, teaser in the middle and these boxes in the bottom. And the paragraph types are just these select options, the three ones that we have. Um, as a side note, uh, don't use this um, on multilingual websites when you don't know what you're doing. It's bro broken-ish. Uh, I think the Drupal 8 version is going to get better. <laughs> okay, sometimes, like, we've been talking a lot about inputting data into Drupal, but sometimes what your client needs is to take data out of Drupal to work with in their business or to make analysis on them, whatever. The, um, a really simple way of doing this is with views. Uh, the basic stuff is already there. Um, and with um, a, view, a module like data export or bulk operation, we can create very powerful interfaces for our client to um, extract and analyze their data. On my example, we have um, organic groups and we create a few relationships on the users, the role of the user, the project. We then have a few export, um, exposed filters where the, our clients can search or filter this data and a lot of uh, fields displayed in a huge, huge table. The um, advantages of, of working like this is that you can, can um, filter their project and send emails to a group of uh, users or also um, change attributes on some of these organic groups in one uh, setting. And, um, and this project, what is also interesting is that sometimes your clients actually are really good at using Drupal. So um, this is one where we give them access to edit these views themselves. So they can change the filters uh, add new fields when their needs change, and that makes them and us very happy. <laughs> and they haven't broken anything yet. Um, this is the same project, but just also as a small, um, for, for this client, we provided about 10 of these different views that do these things, and we created this special um, navigation item in the drop-down um, administration menu. So they have their, their place on the website where they can find everything they need to run their business. Um, automations. Uh, the, I think this is my all-time favorite thing to do as a site builder, is creating automations where you kind of doesn't even have to do anything anymore and it just works. Um, this reduces the amount of errors and broken things um, like crazy. Um, as an example, I picked out this one. Um, we have the, the image on top, as you can see, is the, the main navigation from the website with multiple levels. And the requirement for this project was that on every page, we display uh, underneath the node a uh, view or teasers of the children in the navigation. So this is something that Drupal can do, not itself, because Drupal doesn't know anything, the, the nodes don't know anything about the menu link IDs and the navigation doesn't know anything about node IDs. So we cannot cross uh, anything. So you had to, if you want to do this with Drupal, 
in its standard way, you would have to use relationships or taxonomies, but both of these will have your client update their navigation and then go to the page and update the relationships. The, um, the process to update content is too long and it's too easy to get lost in a step, forget something, and have this chaos situation as a result. So what we did here was with this very small module um, called Menu Node API that basically creates a database table that links your node IDs with your money link IDs. We then can create views that use this uh, table as a relationship. Um, the, the awesomeness of the result is that now your client can go update the navigation, for example, move logistics underneath uh, management, management of your art collection and the views underneath um, the art management page will automatically switch the nodes as well because we have all of the information, the weight, the relationships, the parent, menu, link, uh, menu links, etc. So yeah, automation's favorite thing. <clears throat> this is a part for me. And um, yeah, as we all know, and we mentioned, and also Tris mentioned in the address note, great editor experience is important. And unfortunately, it doesn't work out of the box yet. But we can fix it. And this is great, right? And of course, there is a lot of modules, there is a lot of ways, there is a lot of workarounds as well. But if you have a standard setup, a list, an information stored somewhere, and shared knowledge and distributed knowledge, how you can en embrace this enhancement of, of the experience? And you have defined routine, like you know at which point you introduce what, what questions you ask, or how do you observe the clients working and struggling or feeling happy with your uh, creative system? It helps immensely. And it's important to work closely with your editor. And when I say work closely, I do not mean saying like, yeah, yeah, you just need to learn how it works, I'm sorry. Or yeah, it may be complicated, but yeah, just learn by heart or write it down and use it the way it built. We can learn from them. We can see what are the problems. We can improve our system and we can provide and give really great experience to our editors and clients. And of course, working iteratively is really important because how you can eat an elephant piece by piece. The same with a huge complex websites. So now it's time for questions from your side. And I also show the promised slide with the links. Um, for the questions, you can either say them and we repeat them or the microphone is on that side of the room. Really? No questions? I mean, I have one question, if nobody has a question. Um, for Claudine, rumors has it that you, it's your birthday today? Is that right? So can everybody please stand up? We have a special guest. <laughs> and let's sing. Happy birthday. So the way I see this, you all just came for my birthday, not for the actual presentation. <laughs> um, 
Is Vicky still here? Because you had a question, I saw it. <laughs> I can't speak happy birthday, unfortunately, though. Good day to do it, since um, we're not going to have to pay copyright for that as of today. Um, it's now free to the public domain. Um, I don't know if any of you were in, there was a content strategy talk yesterday, and there was an interesting point um, Ken Rickard made about first right into, um, into the CMS. I'm curious, with, are you managing to make it that, um, that your clients are always writing straight into the CMS, or are there sort of other, way, you know, other ways that they're having to write things first and then editors are putting it in, and is that sort of affecting the workflow? Mm, I'm not sure if I understood the question. So the question was whether the clients work directly with the content management system or they have a strategy that they apply first and discuss internally and then use it in a yeah. content management system. Uh, it depends. It depends on project. And also depends on, uh, on the client. Because from some clients it's really important to define this first, have the, con the content, the whole content created before in advance, improved, approved, and then they create this content in, in, um, in, in Drupal. But in some projects where the um, major part of the website, for example, is the community who, who's supposed to create the content, it's not, it's not possible to prepare in advance and define the strategy. So it defined kind of ish, but not all of this. We often, as a, we often try to uh, build systems where translations can be automatically imported, so it doesn't have to be done manually. So this is something that can be very easily um, done, like in bulks, and then imported. Uh, you mentioned the CK Editor content templates. What's your experience with reusing your content for multiple devices? Don't you have the danger that you get too much markup in your content? if you want to use it for a mobile platform or for Facebook or whatever. I mean, I, I prefer paragraphs because you still have actual content and your content is, is mostly text. And if you s use something like uh, CK, the content templates, it gets too much markup in your content and it becomes difficult to reuse it on, on different devices or, or different uh, uh, media. Do you have any experiences with that or bad experiences with that? The, um the, the, the way we define these templates, we don't usually add more than two divs. It's basically just a way to create containers. We always use them uh, for to allow people to add like uh, images and text side by side. So it's just three divs. That's it's okay, mostly. Um, what's your, um, uh, I guess, your experience with live previewing content uh, before it's published? And um, have you got any suggestions? Don't use the preview function. <laughs> okay, is, is that enough? Um, it's easier to, um, well, sometimes, depending on when you work in the, uh, the development phase and your content uh, editors already add content, they can publish it. It doesn't matter because the website's not live. And I think afterwards it's easier to show them how to deselect the publishing uh, option um, and look at it unpublished than use the preview function. But there are also modules that help you to review the content and approve the content. It helps also. It's not a tricky, and I unfortunately forgot the name of this module. Maybe Josef can help me. But there is a way to review and first change and then publish. So Word this is doable. Moderation. Sorry? Word bench moderation. Yes, one of them. Thank you. More question? If not, then celebrate with us. <laughs>